Actually, a really important piece of advice, actually, it, because you think of the recording and mixing like an artist. So you think like with the musician and there are lots of musicians who aren't technically great players of their instrument, but they have an amazing feel and that's all they need to have. But if you're an engineer, you can't have a good feel on the computer. You need to know everything about the software you're running, everything about the gear you're using, everything about impedance matching, and if there's a ground hum, how do you take care of it, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you need to know the technical stuff so well that you never even think about it, and then you get to go pretend you're an artist and hang around with musicians. Yeah, In the whole five song. EQs and one uh, stereo spring reverb. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Every time I put an EQ in, it sounded worse. Like, okay, I'm not going to EQ it. And that happens sometimes. And I think it's it's like where my console is now at a studio in Wales called Mono Valley. It's a really beautiful tracking room. And I went down there to work on a, a low roar record, which is a, a band on my label no one's ever heard of. But beautiful, beautiful records. And every time we'd go to record anything, I would push up the fader with just the microphone in the room. And it might not sound like what I thought it was definitely going to sound like and what we would want but then i would start eqing or compressing and it just got worse i thought you know what i'm gonna live with what this is because it sounds natural and beautiful to me so that's it and the adele mixes uh, particularly that one were like that it wasn't that everything sounded amazing it was just that it all worked together and like eq has phase shift in it and while you don't necessarily hear it as a thing, it does affect stuff. And it just felt like every time I touched anything, it made it worse. So that mix was just all about the balance.